हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल पैथोलॉजी मास्टर होप यू आर ऑल डूइंग वेल माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर पार्थ गोस्वामी एंड टुडे आई विल टीच यू वन स्मॉल टॉपिक फ्रॉम द सेल इंजरी दैट इज म्यूकोइड चेंज सो गाइस आवर लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव फॉर टुडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज अ स्टूडेंट और पार्टिसिपेंट एट द एंड ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रेजेंटेशन शुड बी एबल टू डिस्क्राइब द डेफिनेशन ऑफ म्यूकोइड चेंज ही शुड नो वॉट इज म्यूकोइड चेंज then the participants should be able to describe the types of mucoid change with the examples and then finally we will solve some of the mcqs for our undergraduate students so guys basically a mucoid change is a morphological changes in case of an cell injury particularly reversible cell injury right and this mucoid the literal meaning of this mucoid means mucus like material so it is basically a secretory product now you might have question that from where such mucus is produced so obviously your answer will be epithelial cell right usually the production is occur from the epithelial cells of your gland this mucin is produced from your epithelial cells mainly but sometimes connective tissue also can produce such mucus like material right so the mucoid material we are talking regarding the mucoid change so this mucoid material contain the mucin within it that is the main component it is a form of glycoprotein plus additionally you will have the mucopolysaccharides so these two component together will form a mucoid material okay all right so what is the source of the production of such mucoid material so obviously your main source is epithelial cells right the main source is epithelial cell of your mucus membrane or of the mucus gland so where such membrane and mucus glands are present so obviously your answer will be oral cavity right the mucus is mainly produced in your oral cavity then you have the mu- mucus producing epithelial cell in the respiratory tract git epithelium also can produce the mucus and your uterine lining also can produce the mucus like material so that is one source that is the main source and another source is connective tissue so whenever you have the lesion or any type of tumor in this two component then sometime it can produces the mucin and so in your histopathology report you have to write you have to report it that mucoid change or mucoid change is present because the prognosis is different from the conventional type of tumor so it should be reported whenever mucoid change is present okay but sometime if you have the doubt suppose you have the doubt that whether it is a mucin or some other substance then you can do the special stain in the certain scenario right special stain can be done this both type of mucin epithelial as well as connective tissue this both type of mucin will classically stain by alcyon blue so if you do the special stain with alcyon blue and if it is positive then obviously it is a mucin material it is a mucoid change right okay another special stain for the epithelial mucin particularly is your pour iodic acid sieve stain that is a pass stain and third one special stain is for the connective tissue only it will be pass negative your connective tissue mucin will be pass negative and the special stain for that is colloidal iron so for the connective tissue you have the colloidal iron as a special stain but in general the main special stain is alcyon blue that is the most important mcq guys remember that it's a one liner frequently asked mcq okay so all right we will start the discussion with the epithelial mucin so the mucin production from the epithelial cell is known by the name epithelial mucin and it is classically seen when you have the catarrhal acute inflammation of your respiratory tract or git epithelium that is a classical example of mucin production right whenever you have the common cold just remember that whenever you have diarrhea right whenever you have the colitis induced diarrhea in such case you have the inflammation of your mucous membrane with the mucin production 
in the right side you can see that you have the upper respiratory and lower respiratory tract epithelium in which the upper respiratory tract epithelium is consist of nasal cavity pharynx and larynx so inflammation of particularly this epithelium will produces the mucin and the second example is inflammation of your uterine lining okay now another example of epithelial mucin production is your nasal polyp whenever you have the edematous polyp in your nasal area right in your nose such mucus production is classically seen just see if you see this figure then you can see that the polyp is lined by pseudo stratified columnar epithelium below which there is a presence of loose stroma and this loose stroma is having the mucoid material right it contain the mucoid material because you know that respiratory tract can produces the mucus from the mucus gland right so in the stroma this uh, mucoid material is seen so this is the case of the nasal polyp if you want to study the nasal polyp in detail then i have already i have already uploaded the video regarding the same in the past you can check the playlist of respiratory epithelium and see the video of nasal polyp if you are interested so this is the another example of epithelial mucin production okay that is the uh, next example of mucin production is your oral cavity right in the oral cavity sometime due to trauma or some other reason you have the mucus filled lesion over the lip or in the oral cavity that is known by the name mucosid it is not a tumor it is just the mucus filled swelling it is also seen in gall bladder as well so in the right side diagram you can see that this is the histopathology of lip showing you the mucosil the lining epithelium is stratified squamous epithelium below which there is a presence of mucus material and the inflammatory cell these are the mucus material so this is the case of mucosil cystic fibrosis of pancreas also can be the example of epithelial mucin in the cystic fibrosis mucin production will be there so guys this is the classical example of epithelial mucin production in case of an malignancy whenever you have the malignancy of certain epithelial cells particularly if you have the adenocarcinoma of the colon then sometime it can produces the excessive amount of mucus material so mucoid change can be seen in adenocarcinoma of the colon and you have to report it in your histopathology report if it is present here you can see that there are poorly formed glands in your histopathology section you can see that these glands are poorly formed and it is a dysplasty so it is a case of adenocarcinoma of colon but if you see in between this gland there is a presence of abundant amount of mucus material this light stained area is your mucus material can you see that so the mucoid change can be present in mucinous adenocarcinoma of the colon okay the another example of epithelial mucin production is the ovary right you know the common type of tumor in the ovary is your surface epithelium tumor the surface epithelial tumor is very common in the ovary the classically example of mucus production is mucinous cyst adenoma the surface epithelial tumor is known by the name cyst adenoma because the cyst will form and it is a glandular tumor that's why it is known by the name cyst adenoma and in the cyst adenoma sometime you have the mucoid change then the classification of tumor is different in such case the tumor is known by the name mucinous cyst adenoma of the ovary so mucinous cyst adenoma ovary tumor is an example of mucoid change okay all right this is all about the epithelial mucin production now we will see some of the example of connective tissue mucin production so which are the connective tissue in your body obviously connective tissue means supportive stroma so it consists of fibroblast from the adipose tissue it consists of your blood vessel right it consists of your cartilage all that are 
connective tissue. So guys, certain malignancy of this connective tissue can produce is the mucin. The classical example is a myxoid liposarcoma in which you have the myxoid material in between the malignant adipose tissue. See, this is your malignant adipocytes, right? It is not the fatty chain, guys. The dysplasia is present. So this is the malignant adipose tissue, right? In between, you can able to see the presence of white colored homogeneous mucus material. So the mucus material is present here, right? So myxoid liposarcoma is an example of mucin production. It is a most important MCQ and the common site for such mucoid liposarcoma is a retroperitoneum. Okay. Another tumor that will produce the mucin is myxoma of the heart. It is seen in left atrium of your heart commonly. So this heart tumor can produce the mucus, myxoma. That's why it is known by the name myxoma, right? Okay. Third example is fibroadenoma. Fibroadenoma is a benign breast tumor, but sometimes it can produce the mucus. So myxoid change can be seen in that tumor. Okay. Another example of myxoid change is your simple ganglionic cyst. Right over the wrist, sometimes you can develop the ganglion. So it's an example of myxoid change. Okay. Another example is myxedema. That is the hypothyroidism. That is a hypothyroidism in which you can have the myxomatous change in your dermis. If you see it in a histopathology, then myxoid change can be seen in the dermis. So guys, this is all about the myxoid change, right? Again, I am summarizing the types of myxomatous or mucoid change. So the examples of epithelial mucin production is cateral inflammation of your respiratory tract of your GIT epithelium and the uterine lining. Nasal polyp is also an example of epithelial mucin production. Another examples are mucosil in the oral cavity and cystic fibrosis of your pancreas. The malignancy that will produce is the mucin. The epithelial malignancy that will produce is the mucin is mucinous adenocarcinoma of colon and mucinous cyst adenoma of ovary. Okay, examples of connective tissue mucin production is myxoid liposarcoma, myxoma tumor and the myxoid fibroadenoma of breast. Ganglionic cyst and myxedema is also an example of mucoid change. Okay, so now we will see some of the MCQs. The first MCQ is which of the following is a, is a special stain for the mucin production. So obviously for the mucin, the main special stain is the alcine blue. This methylene blue is a supravital stain used in the hematology in the peripheral smear. Silver stain is for the fungus, right? And the, there is a no stain exists like that of mucus stain. So your answer will be alcine blue. It is a stain for the mucin. Okay, second number of MCQ, that is a 50 year male patient having growth in intestine. Right, biopsy was done and it was showing the gland forming malignant tumor with pass positive material in between the glands, which could be this material. So guys, here you have the glands, right? which shows the features of dysplasia so the gland forming malignant tumor is known by the name adenocarcinoma so it is a case of adenocarcinoma of your intestine and in between there is a presence of pass positive material so this adenocarcinoma is the epithelial malignancy and the epithelial malignancy can sometimes produce the mucoid material which can be pass positive so it's an example of mucoid change Okay, third MCQ, identify the change in the provided images. So this is the case of liposarcoma. Again, the same example, right? And in between this, you can see the presence of mucoid material, white color. So it's an example of mucoid change. Okay, heart myxoma is an example of which type of cell change? The name itself suggests the myxoma means mucoid change. It's an example of mucoid change. It is not highline change, fatty change or cartilage change. Your answer will be 
mixoid mucoid change okay so guys this is all about the mucoid change hope it will clear your fundamentals regarding the mucoid change if you have any question uh, regarding any video then you can ask in the comment section so guys please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever i am posting the new videos thank you very much guys take care